Hello, welcome to Winter Disco Tabletop Gaming. In this video, we're putting together the new Death Guard models from Space Marine Heroes. As you can see, we have all the sprues here, all six sprues. We're gonna go through them one by one. If you haven't watched the unboxing, check the description and the card up in that spot right there, and you can go check out the unboxing and it goes through everything else. Before we begin, we should say that each box doesn't have individual instructions. What they actually come with, we might not be able to get all of this on screen, it is a big one-sheeter. And it has all the um, instructions for all the individual models. So you'll get the box, this instruction, and then one of the sprues. So you don't know which one it is unless you really go into the sprue and have a look. Now, I know that this one is more slug, simply because he has the gun, that, like the plague spewer. Once you identify things, you'll be pretty clear which one it is. So we scabbeth there. We know he has the flail, so you can easily find that one. So, and I know it's actually the next one on the list. So that one's right there. So we're gonna go through and put them together. So let's get on with it. First up, we're gonna to put together Gurg the Fowl. So this is the one that has the skull helmet and the bolter. That's the first one that I picked up. That's what we're gonna do. Again, look, it's pretty straightforward. It is pretty one page, uh, 11, 12 pieces. So let's get stuck in. We'll try and keep that in shot as much as possible. It will probably get moved around a bit. So let's get stuck in. So we've got all the tools here. We've got a knife, clippers, mold line remover, and a few other bits and pieces in case I need them. Um, with these videos, this is sort of like a build along guide. So the idea is that I'm not gonna cut off any of the sprue marks or anything. I'm just gonna put it together. And they are push fit, but I might use some glue every now and again. So first up, what we need to do is get the bolter ready. So that's part six and seven. So, looks like it orientates this way. No, it orientates that way. So, um, the base down there. So six and seven. So these sprues, if you've opened a box, these are slightly different to the normal ones. Almost like, you can almost pull them out, but it's good just to have the the set of clippers just to cut away. So normally the connection points there that you can see, they're going to be a lot thicker. So I'm not quite sure about these ones. I think they're um, pressed in the UK. Well, the injection mold is in the UK. I'm not 100% sure. Doesn't actually say which. Usually it'll say it's um, pressed in the UK. But in this case, not too much. So... This gun actually goes together pretty straightforward. I actually might move it a little bit closer just so you can get a better view. I actually move the instructions out of the way. I'll bring it back in when necessary. So there's two points there that will connect to and it goes together pretty straightforward. It'll clip in and just goes like that and it clips in. Normally I would use glue, particularly around that. It's a little flimsy on that mark, but it is what it is. All right, next up we need to do the body. So the body and one or two heads. We will build it to the instructions so it'll be like the skull head, I guess. I think it's actually it's a real head. I don't think it's a mask or anything. So we need parts three and four and one and two. So we'll get the head first. I mean, it does have the iconic head there and I'm gonna save that because I love it. So we've got the head there and when you clip it, it just seems to come out. Even it has a number of contact points. So let's cut the rest out. Just be careful you don't cut any of the big chunky bits off. You don't want that. And like I said, it just seems to pop off for some parts. So let's actually try something. If I do that, yeah, you can pull it off. Okay. I think they're designed to be a lot easier to manage. All right. So the body goes together like that, but we need to put the head in. So I would normally glue the head in, but for this one, Let's just try it without the glue. I think it's going to go in a very particular location. Round you get, Sunny Jim. In yet, in you get. And you can see it's really fiddly, actually. This is part of the problem with these ones when they have different pegs in them. You've got to line them up absolutely perfectly, or they just do not go together. So, some of the tools here. Just this one, usually this one just for prying open. I'm going to pop it back open again and try and get it correctly lined up, which is why I'm gluing. So I'm gonna actually put a bit of glue in there. 
try and get it lined up so it seems to go like that. You can't actually see, but it would be like that. Just get the camera a little bit closer. That's better. Now you can actually see what I'm doing. So as you can tell, there's heaps of sprue lines on there and mold lines, and I have not removed them. And I do that on purpose for these videos. So I know people don't like it. I don't like it either. But it is what it is. Come on. Oh, it's actually really fiddly to clip in. You know what? I'm going to take the head out and put the body together separately. And this is why I do these videos. Simply because sometimes the instructions don't actually work in reality. So we'll take that head out. We will pop this together. And even still, it's really difficult to go together. Like, it just doesn't seem to want to line up properly on this section here. It's very odd. So I think if we go the legs first. There we go, that's better. And this one, you can't actually really see how it's going in. It's actually quite frustrating. So that one, I might actually cut that off, to be honest. I don't think we need it. We can get rid of that. But the two leg ones have to line up, and it's such a weird angle that they go into each other as well. So, there we go. Alright. Popped in that way. I think with the combination of all three, um, three points create a triangle, it doesn't quite work properly. Alright, but that's fine. Alright, so with the head, I'm actually going to glue this in. So, what we do here is clip the bottom off and the piece has gone flying <laughs> and then I dump just a bit of glue in here just around the neck joint there and then stick the head where we need it to go and it actually gives you a bit more ability to move it around a bit so that's fine excellent so that will um, go in there and stay there so what we'll do we will put part 9 on next We'll put 9 and 8 and then the gun will pop right in. And there's a little clip bit for that. So let's get the arms out. Alright, they just fall out. There you go. So it does lock in. Like you can't, you can move that one around, which is fine. Now we need the other little clippy section which is quite strange. Um, I'm sure these pieces do exist in other kits, but for this one, it's a little odd. I haven't seen it before like this. Usually they'll, it'll just um, slide right on. So this will, that, okay. It's gonna be a little fiddly because I don't actually know what angle it's meant to go in as. So what I actually do, I'll actually clip it into this bit first. And it's quite fiddly. I always need to use some tweezers to actually slide it in. Okay. Uh, okay, so yeah, it's definitely better to do it in this section first because it does, there is a little um, rectangular bit that will like, lock into there. And then we go. Move that arm around a bit. Clip it in. And then lock that in there. Now, definitely, I advise some glue in that section, particularly in that arm there, just to lock it in, but... It's fine, and the head's still a bit loose, but that's okay. Actually rotate it just to be a little bit looking the right way. There we go, lovely. Okay, um, now we need the little Nurgling, number 12, and the base, which doesn't actually have a number. I guess that doesn't matter, it says 13. Okay, oh, and the Nurgling. Gotta have the Nurgling, because really, I'm surprised that these are called Space Marine Heroes. It should be really Nurgling Heroes. Because, you know, Nurglings are best. So we'll clip that little fella in. Oh, he's run the wrong way. There we go. He locks in there. And then the body will lock in. And because this is built into the base... Oh, yeah, definitely. I think you definitely need to put some glue in there. But I won't for now. Into that little hand joint. Um, it locks in. So part of the foot is already on the base. Okay. Um, now we have the backpack and part 11, which is another Nurgling. So we'll just cut this off. And the other Nurgling. 
I try to cut in camera, but it's always a little bit difficult. So we'll put the noodling on first. How does this fella go? Cool. It's a little bit difficult to lock in. Interesting. So it seems to be, it's, there it is. It's a weird locking mechanism in there. So you may have to twist it around to get it right. And the final one there. And that locks in. Head is still a bit loose, but that will come better. There we go. Look at that fella. The model is actually really good. So this is Gurg the Fowl. With two little nurglings and a bolter. Again, I love how the uh, barrel is drilled out. I love it. Although it would be better if it was a single piece. I think that could have been done a little bit nicer. But, you know, they've got to do what they've got to do. All right, let's move on to the next one. We are putting together Collarus. You can actually see that without too much shine. Um, throwing stick bombs and a little nurgling joining in. So he has like a nice bandolier around him. And those really chunky backpacks are really like. So let's get stuck in. Pretty straightforward. Um, he has the bolter at his side, so the bolts are getting split. The backpack's actually in two bits, so there's a few bits in here. But again, body first and then a head. Um, let's think about what head we're going to use. It is the one with the skull and, well, not the skull, but the, um, the spiny type thing. So that's part two. So we'll cut that one out first. If I can find where it is, there it is, top of the sprue. Pretty straightforward. Now we need. Parts three and four, obviously the body. With these ones, sometimes I do get a little bit fiddly with part numbers because you do have some odd little pieces like in the first model we did. But with this one, it just pops out like that. Okay, so with the first one, I did cut that head out. So I reckon that's probably gonna be the best way to go again, but I'm gonna give it a shot. So you put the head in. It would help if you put the head the correct way. <laughs> That's fine, we'll get there. Because it is fiddly, like you've got to basically hold various different pieces and then try you've got to try and lock them in somehow. And this is what happened with the first one, and it never really worked properly because of the head. Alright, but that seems to have locked in properly. Alright, I'm just pushing in really hard just to make sure that it's all locked in there nice and tight. And there we go. This head's there. I love the, the plate armor there that goes up. You actually see it. Goes up pretty high around his face. I like that. I do love the variation in Death Guard. I think that's really why I'm attracted to it. Okay, next we need five and six. So, the arms. There's six there with a stick grenade. And the other arm. And that pops out. So, the stick grenade goes on the right arm. And then the knife hand goes on the left arm. If that will go in, it's a little strange. It's a little strange angle, actually. Hmm. There it is. Yeah, it's a weird angle for it to go in, but... It would have been better if it was just coming straight out, but they don't always do that. Looking good so far. Send the base and the nurgling. So the base is part 12, the nurgling is part 11. So we have this. Uh, let's double check that that's correct. Yeah, so it is a hexagonal. Is it? One, two, three, four, five, six. It's a six-sided one. That's a hexagon, isn't it? I don't even know. Come on. In you go. Pretty tight. So you may need... Oh, that's actually really tight to get in. Ah, uh, okay. I was wondering why there was no spot for the second foot, but he's raised off there. As you can see. And a little nurgling. Where are you, little buddy? Part 11. And actually, it's probably best to put this guy in first. Because he's a little tricky. A little tricky man, actually. Yeah, let's just pull this one out completely. Oh, he's really tight in that... Oh, that one, that um, hex joint there, or whatever it's called. 
that is really tight. Okay, and you can twist him around, he will slot into space there. So he kind of lines up next to, sorry, next to that grenade. And then he will go in over the top. If we can actually get him in there correctly. Come on. Oh my god. It's really difficult to get in. He's not going to come out any time. Alright. So there we go. We've got all of that done. So now we need the backpack, which is two parts, and the bolt gun. So we'll do the backpack first. So that's part seven and eight. And I just dropped the head out for no reason. <laughs> They're gonna be carried away. But that's fine, they're gonna go into bits box. Okay, the backpack goes together very easily, just like pops right in. There we go, clips in, no problem, you don't even really need to see that. And then this one goes in this bit of a chunky peg, so it should be clipping fine. Yeah, that just locks in. You might even be able to hear it on camera, I'm not 100% sure. And finally, the bolt gun. So these are the last few bits to pop out. And I think, yeah, sometimes it pops out. Sometimes they don't. Because there are some arrows on here. I don't know if you can see that. There's a little arrow there. And that seems to indicate where you cut first. Okay, bolt gun goes together. Pretty straightforward, just like the first one actually goes together a bit too easily and then it clips on at the side there so you may even want to put this in before it's actually quite difficult to get in you might want to do it before you put that arm in yeah it's really difficult so I'm going to take this arm out if I can actually get it out Oh, no, nah, I can't actually get the, the arm out, so, such a weird angle, why is it like that angle, wow, that's so difficult, definitely need a little bit of glue there, because it just doesn't seem to go into that angle at all, wow, that's really strange. That's really, really strange. So I think you actually have to take this arm off, or at least move it out of the way. That might work. And then you can actually get the angle correct. There it is. That is so strange. That is such a weird angle for it. And then we pull that back, and that will slide back into place. I think. There we go. Okay. And there we go. That, yeah, that is really weird to get that in there. And of course, I recommend definitely gluing the gun together. So there we go, there's Colorus. Grenade stick boy with plenty of grenades and plenty on the ground too. And of course, cute little Nogli with a grenade pin <laughs> stuck in his face. Oh, that's right, it's not a knife, it's a little grenade pin. Oops, sorry mate. So there we go, there's Colorus. All right, let's get cracking on to the next one. We are putting Clodicus together. This is the Icon Bearer with the weird alien-esque face hugger, not quite, type things. Very, very odd. So that's what we're going to do. There's a few parts in this, a few more, a few more steps, but that's fine. Uh, so we need three, four, and five, and then a head. We will be going the normal head, which is the helmeted head. So let's cut that off first. Okay, so the helmeted head. And you might actually be able to hear some wind outside as well. It is quite windy. The day is very hot and windy. I was like, I don't even know what the temperature is out there now. 40 degrees Celsius. What's that? It's like 95 Fahrenheit? Don't know. All right. That's fine. And five. We need a little tentacles. Okie dokie. Let's see if we can get this head in there. So like we've done... Getting the head in there is a little bit tricky. But we will persevere and try and do it in as intended. And then if it doesn't work, we will then do it our own way. 
So that hasn't quite locked in properly at all. So one side's locked in, the other side has not. I don't know if the head's in the way. The top half goes in, but then push it in, it somewhat goes in. I think it just needs a real good push. So I'm sorry about the, ca the camera being knocked around. It's attached to the desk. And sometimes you just gotta push real hard. All right, so that's locked in. Yeah, that was a little difficult. Oh, love that shoulder. More of those, please. Just, just give us some more extrusions. And then the nice looking tentacle bit slides in there, I think, if we can get it in. Just wanna be careful with this, it is a little fiddly. Let's have a look, it hasn't quite gone in properly. So there's like a particular angle it needs to go in. That seems to have fixed it. There we go. All right, we have the tentacle in there. Not too bad at all. I love that, how all the tendrils are starting to encase his entire armor, love it. All right, next up, um, his arm and little friend on a base. So that's eight, 10, and 11. Uh, eight, 10, and 11. Oh, mics on this side, so that's eight there. He's a little friend down there. And 11, the base. So to get some stability here, let's put him on the base first. So one foot goes on the rock and the other, there's a little, uh, I guess diamond shaping there that locks into that foot. So you can easily maneuver that around. Now that just locks in without any issue. Now we need the other arm. The other arm goes on like so, just locks in. So you have a little bit of movement there, but not really because you do expose a bit. There you go, that's the angle there. You can actually feel it locking. And then this fella here, probably should have put him in first, but, oh, he's a little fiddly. Come on fella, in you go, there we go. And grab him by the head and push him in, just be careful there's all little bits and pieces coming off. So there we go, most of the body done. Now we need the backpack and the icon. So we'll do the backpack first, because we'll do the icon last, of course, because that's the best bit. So six and seven for the backpack. So it's a split backpack, as a few of them have been. And the other section, which is there, just comes out super easy. And that should just lock in without any issue. Okay, a little tight, so you might need to do it. One of the problems I have with these models is it doesn't exactly go together like there. Um, it's not ideal. Okay, I might come back and fix that later, but we'll just get that in. So that backpack goes on. So you can see there, there is massive gaps in the backpack. Part of that is the peg. You can cut, trim the peg down. Um, that means there's space for air or glue to escape or to be in there. And then that gap will fix up. Finally, the icon, the best bit. Okay, so this is a little fiddly. So I'm pushing into the base first because it's got to go in there. There we go. Definitely while it's locked in the base, you can pull that out like super easily. So I definitely recommend putting a dab of glue in there. And honestly, you could leave the base to last on this. I think that might be the best way forward, but there we go. There's Clodicus, the icon. Very cool icons with a Nurgling stuck in there. Can you actually see that? There we go, a Nurgling stuck in there. Literally, you can see from the back there <laughs> that he's hanging on for dear life. Very cute. And the weird alien-esque ones down the bottom there. Okay. It's one of my favourite models in the kit. So that's very cool. Alright, let's get on to the next model. This one now we're doing is Scabbath. He's the guy with the um, flail, plague flail, whatever they're called, and a few other bits and pieces. So it's like a double-handed flail that you can see there. Very, very cool. So we'll be sticking with the head as usual, as shown here. So it's the bare head. So we get parts three, four, 
So in this case, we'll do two, three, four, and then nine, which is a cheeky little part, which I don't actually know what it is. So we're gonna go for the head. It is head number two. And let's clip that off. It's actually a little difficult to clip off for some reason. Some parts are a little tougher to get out than others. But it's all part of it. Alright. And we need part 9. So part 9 is... What is part 9? Where is that? Am I missing something? Oh, it's the sword. It's just on the instructions. It is such a weird angle. Okay. So as usual, the head goes in. That's the back. So let's see if we can actually do it properly. It's fiddly. It's all hell. So you move around and you just drop it. I'm not a fan of the way these heads are put together, to be honest. I don't think it needs to be like this. Okay, and let's push that together, see if we can get that to lock in properly. Uh, this is another case of it not even lining up closely at all. Alright, that's one side. So we just have to move around, wiggle a little bit to get it into place. Oh, it's a tough one actually. It's just not lined up at all. So you can see on the foot there, it's just not, it needs to be further up like that. So let's pull that apart. We'll get the bits in there and just uh, pry it open. So don't push too hard when you want to do this. It's probably even better to do with like a little knife. That's actually a lot easier to do. Nice, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna come back with the head like we did before. So if we get the center point in, then the rest should just line up and go together. Like that. And it does not want to go together. So all right, we'll go back again. And we can trim off some of the pegs there. Oh, almost bent the body a bit there. Sorry, that wasn't on camera, but I was just like prying it out. So looks like I'm actually going to use glue this time. I'm going to cut out that peg. That's gone flying, almost took my eye out. So we'll line it up. I will keep the middle peg there in the middle of the body. But I will come back with some glue into those sections there. So I do have some modeling glue here, it's like plastic glue. So what I want to do, actually take it apart again. So where it should join, you can add Come on, little glue, you just came out before. There we go. It's a little tiny dabs there. And that will go together. And definitely do it in a ventilated room. I don't have the windows open at the moment because we have the aircon going because, like I said, it is ridiculously hot outside. So there we go. Okay, that's locked in better. Now with the head, like we did some of the other ones, chop off that bit and then we'll just glue it in. a little bit of glue there and the head can go in there and it sort of goes off to the side sorry that's not in camera but I literally just dab a glue and then pressed it in like that easy mode quite easy and then this thing goes this goes in here I don't know if there's any particular way that it goes okay we'll go this way because the little icon is facing down There we go. You just got to get the angle right sometimes. So obviously the little fly icon needs to face down and you can figure that out. Base time. So parts 11 and 12. So the base for 12 and the little nurgling. Where are you little fella? There you are. And that just falls off. Okay. Um, let's see how we go. I think we put the 
model in first. Yeah, we can put the model in and then just pressing that head back in to make sure he's okay. And then the Nurgling can go in without any issue. Probably one of the easier Nurglings to put in. There we go. That just locks in like that. Pretty straightforward. So he was in there, doing his thing. You can probably move him around a bit. No, that's sort of where he goes. It's in that spot. Okay, next up. We need um, 10, well, 5, 6, and 10. So 5 seems to be a little lock that goes in. So we'll cut that out first. I'm just trying to find it on here. I can't even see it. Oh, there it is. It's right in front of me. So that's just a little, as you can see, I'll put it in my hand so you can see it. It's a little kind of weirdness weird little thing there. So the half one, you can see there, there is sort of a half moon. So that all the pegs should be like that, to be honest. And that, okay, that just pushes in and it locks there in place. No big deal. So then we get 10 and 6, which is the backpack and one of the shoulders. the backpack in, no big issue there, it's not that big a deal, and because I've glued his head just be sure that he's okay there, excellent, and this shoulder pad goes on this side here, and it seems to, you can sort of move it and it just stops about there, or there's little bumps, I think that's where it's meant to go, it's kind of like there, All right, flail time, now we need to build the flail first, so seven and eight, and the last two bits on the sprue. Except for the other head, if you haven't chopped that off yet. Okay. So, this just slides in like that. It is a half moon as well, so... Or a semicircle, whatever you want to call it. So that is good. So, let's see how this goes. So you do have the peg there that we've put in, it goes into the hole there. There's also a little nub there on the shoulder pad, which will go into that little hole. Um, I should show, you, should show you that little hole there, right in the center of the screen. It'll go into that bit there. Like that, that just locks in, and then you just maneuver around a little bit to get his hand in. There we go. There is Scabbath. Whenever I... <laughs> Say the name Scabbath or think about Scabbath, I think of Black Sabbath. But there you go. Good little guy with a giant flail. Love it. And some Nurgling holding onto the flail too. Very cute. We are doing more slug. This is the guy with the Plague Spewer. Probably one of my favourite models in the kit. And it is the poster boy. As you can see there. There, his face is very close up. A little better on here. This guy here. He's the poster boy of this series. So let's get stuck in. Now, I need to see what head he uses. There is an unmasked head. And a masked head, helmeted head I should say. So we're going to use the one that's in in all the pictures because I like them. So we'll cut that one off first because we're building the body. And again, it's the same as all the other bodies. You get the head and sandwich that between the two halves. And just be careful you don't cut off any of the pegs that you don't need to. All right. Let's see if we can do this again, doing the head properly. So it doesn't seem to want to lock into anywhere. It seems very odd that it wants to do that. And like we've had trouble with all of these ones so far, we will just play around until it, see the head just falls out. So we're not going to muck around with that. We're just going to go the body and try and get it in all together. Like so. And this one, I'm pushing pretty hard to lock it in and you do feel that it locks in. There we go. And yes, I can see there's lots of mold lines and sprue marks, but I'm not I'm not doing it. <laughs> I will when it comes to painting and preparing, but for these instruction guides, no. Because it'd be here for ages. If I was doing this on a live stream, I definitely would. So his face is looking that way. So let's see if we can line this up properly. So 
Yeah, it looks pretty good, but we'll aim it down just a little bit. Like, sorry, there we go. All right, so we've got that body together. Now we put the arms, and there is another little peg there, and that goes into the base. We'll get the arms first. Or, no, let's put him in the base first. Let's, I think putting him in the base means we can actually stand him up as well, which is good. So we need Nurgling number 11. Go. We'll put him in the base, so both his feet come up like that. Ah, they're the backs of his feet, that's why. Okay, so the backs of his feet, and one has a peg so that goes in, and that locks in really nicely. Again, I would definitely glue that down. But I love the bases, because he's up there, posing up there on there like that. Put the little nurgling in. I'll do it from this angle, you won't be able to see because of the shadow, but he will go in like this. Come on. There we go. Because he has to get in perfectly because he is touching part of the place spewer once we put that in. All right, so part five is the little peg. Just like one of the other ones we did. And this is, let's have a look. So the long part, so there's two parts, so there's a short part and a long part, the long part faces outwards. So I just wanted to make sure that's correct because you don't want to put the wrong part in. Come on, out you come. It's a little fiddly. So I'm trying to do it on camera and not shake the camera too much, but it's also a little bit difficult. Oh, I was putting it in the wrong way. That's why. There we go. Let's fiddle around. You'll figure it out. It'll go in there. All right. So now we need to build the plate, the arms actually. So eight, seven, and eight. Okay. Let me just put these in. Um, these are half moon ones, so they will lock in to a particular location. Like it needs, it actually needs to lock in because of how the weapon is set up. And I kind of wish they did this on all of them, to be honest. Okay. So this is going to be fiddly, I think. Hmm. This arm is strange. It has a little peg down there, as you can see. And that lines up to another part of the gun, but the angle of it is so strange. No, that's part of the sprue. So part of the sprue is disconnected from that. So that explains that. So ignore that. But if you do have that happen, that's what that little bit is. All right, so. 9, 10, 6, and 13. So we'll get the backpack done first. So 9 and 10 is the backpack. Very big, chunky backpack. I love it. Reminds me of the Ghostbusters. This goes together very straightforward. Obviously, put it in the right way. That locks in. Easy. Easy mode. Easy mode. And then the gun, so 6 and 13. There's a few little... This one has a lot of um, points on it, so... Just be careful there. So, with this one, you have a little peg there, I don't know if you can see it, a little knob there, circular knob. Um, this locks into part of the gun. Now, I'm not sure how I'm meant to put this together. This is going to be a bit fiddly, I think. Um, I'm just sort of playing around. So it goes together like that. And that goes in there. And that's that way. Okay. So there's no hole. There's a hole on one side, just there. It goes facing the model. So when you put that together, this bit locks into there. And that should lock all together. It's very fiddly. Very, very fiddly. But it does lock in. Just move it around until it locks. And you'll be okay. Definitely recommend a little bit of glue on there. 
a lot of contact points, but it's a bit fiddly. Okay, and now we slide it in. So we have this point here that we've put out from a very awkward position, and there's a hole in the plague spewer there, um, and there's also the hole in the backpack, which goes to there. So requires a little bit of maneuvering, and in fact, I think you could even put the backpack on. No, you can't. I was going to say, you put the backpack on first. It does actually require a little bit of maneuvering around to actually get it in, in the right place. So that's it there. The hand goes down like that. So I'm trying to use the camera. So I've moved it down. I guess move this arm out of the way. Then you can slide it down into the right spot. Everything locks in. And that locks into the arm. Very fiddly. It does definitely require some glue because there's so many loose points there. But I will come and do that at another stage before I go to paint them and clean them up. So there we go. I think this is one of the better models. I think it is the best model of the kit. Let's just say that. There we go. There we go. There's a little nurgling there. We can move him around, actually, and he will... If we can move him around, he's actually grabbing some of that. So you can actually glue him in there and make it all gooey and stuff. So I'm just trying to move him in there. A little bit of a gap, but you can move the nurgling around to grab the ooze that's coming out. The plague. Well, gross. There we go. More slug with the plague spewer. Excellent. Best model of the kit. All right, so let's get on to the final one. So this final model is Plague Champion Gangrus. Um, he has a plasma pistol and a plague sword and nurglings that are completely wrecked. <laughs> They're not pretty at all. This one has the, a really good cape too, I think I see, so I like it. All right, so we'll be using the main head. And the main head is part... What part is that? doesn't even have a number. Part one. So we'll cut that one out. And then the body, again, is pretty obvious. And I'm going to say we're going to have the same problem that we've had with all the other ones. Just trying to get it in. If you're a bit more careful and not rushing, like I am to try and get through this video, um, you can do it. you just got to be careful with it. So let's have a look here. So looking at the model... Does oh, it's really fiddly. So he's facing that way. So if we this one, that does seem to lock in. When the other ones didn't. See it just it's locked in there, which is very strange. And I say that, and it falls out. So I'm not gonna muck around with that. Let's just cut that off and we'll glue it in. And we may have to cut some pegs off for these bits too. So let's Alright, that's that one, and then that one. This went in a lot easier. Still tight, and you really got to be careful with this because that joint line is right down the middle of the front of the model. Not a great spot for it, but I think you can't always get the right spot. Okay, and we'll glue the head in. A little bit of glue, that was probably a bit too much glue because I wasn't looking. And put the head in and just aim it that way. And it seems to actually lock in there too, so definitely is a spot for it and that'll still be tacky while we're working next up we need part five to put onto his arm and part ten the base and nine for the little one of the creepy nurglings i don't don't know, quite know what's happened to them and that is this nurgling here because he's holding a cable i don't quite know what he's holding the cable for and we need the plasma pistol hand which is this one here So we can put this one on straight away. No big issue, and this seems to lock into place. It's very much locked in there. You can move it around, but it definitely has a place where it goes. Uh, let's put in... Actually, I want to put in the Nogling first. Because this looks like... Ah, okay, so it's actually connected to this long cable on the base, if you're having trouble getting it in. And then the feet line up right here. And then we'll fix the head up because it's knocked it off. There we go. That looks good. All right, so now we need to do the cape. So the cape is six, seven, eight. So the cape, backpack, and the other half of the backpack. And that will slide on together. So we'll grab the cape.
backpack and the other part of the backpack. Like I said, I can't always get this on camera to cut these parts out because it's a little difficult, but it is what it is. So, the cape. Obviously that's facing outwards. Um, this part of the backpack goes in like that. I can actually do it correctly. Nope, it goes like that, I should say. So it slots in through that hole there. Does it? Seems a little fiddly actually. I'm just trying to put it all together. It's a little, it's a little odd. Actually, you have to build it on. That's a little fiddly. Yeah, you have to build it on here completely. That makes no sense. The instructions don't match that at all. Like that. And that goes into that bit there. Okay, right. It, yeah, the instructions say basically build it off the um, model, but I'd say you actually build it on the model like this. It's a little fiddly, but we'll get there. Can't have it always be easy. I'm trying to do it on camera, but it's so fiddly. There we go. Okay, it takes a bit. Takes a bit of prying, but it'll get there. And then this section here, we'll just lock in, and the head. I'd always leave the head to last with this one, I think. It does need to lock in more, so I'm not going to lock it all the way in. But there we go. There it is. Plague Champion Gangrus. There you go. Very, very nice. I do like that model. I love the cape. I love the Death Guard capes. Very low and dynamic, very tattered. Love it. Love the look. Okay. So what we'll do, we'll bring all of them on screen, and then we can have a look. And here we are, all six of the Space Marine Heroes, Series 3 Plague Marines. Very lovely models. As with all Death Guard models, I think I honestly can't be too impartial about it, because I love, I've always loved Death Guard, I love the new design. Just creepy and gross, and has a lot of humour in there, particularly with the Nurglings. Yeah, like, it is mostly straightforward to put together, I do recommend cutting the heads and then gluing them in and again there's a lot of stuff you should be gluing anyway um, like you can take them off the bases pretty easily there's a lot of flimsy parts as there are with more contemporary games workshop models but yeah it's good stuff um, so let's pull out some of the good ones obviously the icon guy icon man I've already forgotten their names <laughs> um, very cool icon it will stand out on the tabletop so that's one of my favorites and let's pull out I just want to pull out this guy I won't show off too much because the video has been going for a long time now but yeah the Plague Spear guy the poster boy of the series I love it such a chunky big backpack I love it and there we go it is disappointing there's only six I would want to see I wish there was an entire unit I think series one and two had ten models in each series what can you do though it is disappointing, but we get new Death Guard models, which is always awesome. And extra heads. So I haven't got all the heads to show off, but for example, there is, if I can get it to focus, there is one of the heads there. So there's, each box has one, or has two heads. Um, some are helmeted, some are not. As you can see, there's another one there. If I can get any focus, there we go. So you get extra heads for your Death Guard army, which is very nice. So that's we're going to leave it there. Thank you for watching, if you have made it through this far. Please leave a comment if you have and let me know. And if you are new to the channel, welcome. Please do subscribe and hit that bell button so you do get notifications because we do unboxings all the time. So that's it. I'm out of here. You can buy this model in the link below through different affiliate programs. And if you do, um, the channel will get a little bit of a kickback and that will help us buy more uh, models and more books and more things to show off. So that's it. I'm out of here. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.